Man, what an awesome time of the fall. Here it is late September, colors are starting to turn, and most of the crew is in Missouri. Zach is chasing elk, and right now, I'm heading out on a short two and a half day hunt that I'm really excited about for a number of reasons. First of which is I have a ton of hunting opportunities where I'm going. I have a bow tag that's good for mule deer or whitetail deer. I have an antelope tag, and the rut is in full swing right now. And I also brought my shotgun in case I get a chance to do some dove hunting or sharp tail grouse hunting. But more than anything, this trip is kind of a recon mission because I'm hunting a new area that I've never been to before. And what I'm really excited about is that I just got permission to hunt on several thousand acres of private land, which includes creek bottom habitat as well as a lot of open prairie habitat. So I'm really grateful to the landowner for the opportunities that this presents. And also there is some public land in the area that I'll be checking out as well. So it's a short trip, but there will be no shortage of things to do while I'm there. And then I'll probably focus most of my time on trying to find mule deer. Now I've spent very little time hunting mule deer in the past, other than I guess I did shoot a mule deer doe years ago, but it was more of an opportunistic harvest while I was hunting whitetails from a tree stand. So I've never shot a mule deer buck and I've never even stalked a mule deer that I can remember, at least not while I've had a bow in my hand. I've also never shot an antelope or a sharp tailed grouse. So there's potential for a lot of firsts on this trip and I'm really, really excited about that. So as soon as I get there, I'll get the spider out and probably watch over the creek bottom tonight and tomorrow morning, I'll see what there are for whitetails in the area and then I'll turn my attention to mule deer from there. Yeah, that's awesome. Looks like he's got a big old bulge in his belly. Like he's just eating something. All right, got some pictures of him. I need to keep moving, get to that spot to scout tonight, or glass tonight at least, but I'd like to try to find a way to move him off the road because I don't want him to get hit. Get in my truck and then maybe use a couple of my extendable GoPro poles and see if I can get him going with that. Oh, he is coiled and ready to go. There you go. All right, now he moved off. Got the GoPro in his face, didn't like that. Moved him off the road. That way he doesn't get hit by somebody else. That was cool. Prairie rattlesnake right there. He got a big old ball in its stomach. Probably ate a mouse or a vole or something like that. Time to move on. I'm almost to my spot. Get out and do some glassing here this evening. Just hope I don't see too many more of those. One angry coyote. <laughs> it's about nine o'clock right now, and I'm just sitting in the cab of my truck, just grabbing a bite to eat, looking at Onyx, and there's a coyote, but it's just been barking nonstop for the last several minutes. So I can't really see it with the binoculars, but I got a line on it. So I'm curious to see. I'm gonna nerd out on you here a little bit. I've got this camera. It's a Sony A7S III. It's a full frame camera that is really, really good in low light. Dropping it down to the lowest shutter I can, opening up the aperture as far as it can go. I'm raising the ISO to about 160,000. So the image is going to be really grainy. Just going to nail the focus. Yep, there it is. You see it barking, throwing its head back. That's one agitated coyote. Well, the little experiment worked. I was actually able to find and film that coyote with this camera in the middle of the night. I mean, I've always known that this camera is really good in low light. I mean, that's one of the reasons I bought it, but that's pretty impressive. There we go. There's a group of deer. 
Probably that same bachelor group I saw last night. A bunch of little guys sparring, pushing each other around. Looks like mostly younger bucks so far. I'm sure there's a mature buck somewhere. He may just be tucked back into a corner of this creek bottom where I can't see him. This morning I'm glassing this creek bottom again. Just getting a feel for what deer are in the area and seeing where they're moving and seeing where they're bedding. I'm just learning as much information as I can on this trip and you know, we'll use that information when I hunt this area when the conditions are more favorable. The wind is just dead calm right now and it's supposed to be light and variable today so it just it wouldn't work well to hunt this spot tonight. So I'm just easing into things here, learning as much as I can, doing a lot of glassing and, and this afternoon I may get out and see if I can find some antelope to hunt though. It's going to be a lot of fun. Because tomorrow, the wind is supposed to really pick up late morning, which will make for good stalking conditions. So I'm going to go to the prairie spot and try for mule deer. Anyways, like what I'm seeing here so far in this creek bottom, there's a good number of whitetails and mostly does and fawns and small bucks so far. But there's got to be a, a good mature buck somewhere here. I think there's going to be some great opportunities to hunt this spot when the conditions are right. I think it's a spot where you, know, you can glass in the morning. You'll see where a buck goes back to bed and then either you know, dive in if the conditions are right to stalk or just get in real close to where he's bedded for the afternoon hunt. So also looks like a great spot for calling and decoying too, which I'll be real excited about here in October when the rut ramps up. But this is awesome. It's a lot of fun exploring and learning new ground. Gonna go for a little wildlife drive here mid-morning. Bringing out the big lens, seeing what I can find to photograph and film. That's awesome. I even like it better these up on a fence post instead of on the ground. It's easier to separate them from the background. Hey, let me get this close with the truck. Now I'm going to see if I can get a little closer on the foot. If I get directly in line with the fence line, I think it'll, he won't be able to see me and slip out from behind and see if he'll let me get any closer. He may not. Still there. Just go straight down this fence line to him. There's enough posts that is blocking his view so I can sneak up there. I got maybe 35, 40 yards from him. He's still sitting there on that fence post. And sneaking up here, my heart's racing like I'm stalking a deer. First good burrowing owl footage that I've ever got right there. And these guys live in these prairie dog towns out here on the plains. They're actually migratory birds, so they breed and raise their young here, and then they migrate south in early fall. And that is a shot that I've wanted to get for a long time right there. Lighting's not great, middle part of the day, but to get within 40 yards of a burrowing owl and have them sitting up on that fence post, getting that nice long shot down the fence line. I just made my day right there, that's awesome. All right, <clears throat> better get back to it. Holy cow. Rattlesnake right there. Let's see if I can find him and not get bit here. There he is. He's going right by the fence post. Just went to close the gate and there was a rattlesnake. Holy just right in that little girl. taller grass right there, right next to where I pick up the gate. I mean, literally just inches from it. I mean, I'm actually wearing snake chaps right now that my neighbor was kind enough to let me borrow. You know, every year now, for the last three years, I've had really close calls with rattlers that were just right there at my feet. Whoa. He was all coiled up and ready to roll, Greg. That was a close call there. 
I know most people are probably thinking, why don't you kill that thing? But encountering rattlesnakes is just part of hunting in this country. And I, you know, like I say, I don't feel the need to kill them just because I encounter them. So I'm just gonna let this guy be and let him do his thing and I'm gonna go do the same. That'll get your heart rate going a little bit. There we go, there's some mule deer. Does and fawns and maybe a small buck. You can see a lot of country back in here, so I've got all these little draws that I can glass into and I've already seen some mule deer working through one of them. I saw an antelope buck just for a split second off to my left. As much as I want to go after him, maybe try to decoy him. I just got sat down. I need to see what there is for deer moving out here. I've got a lot of country to glass here for the first hour or two, depending on what I see. I'm just gonna keep pushing in farther today and see what I can find. There's a lot of nooks and crannies where mule deer could be bedded back in these hills. It's a lot of fun exploring new country like this. You just never know what you're gonna get into. Haven't seen anything else. I feel like I need to get in deeper on this piece, but this was the first spot about a mile and a quarter back in that I wanted to look into this big drainage here. I can see a lot of country. Just haven't seen much for deer yet, but I've got a lot more ground to explore and I think once I get a little bit deeper it looks more like the kind of habitat where mule deer are going to be bedded in. I mean, it's basically dead calm right now so stocking conditions would be really tough. It's going to be hot again today so undoubtedly they're going to, they're going to be bedding up in the shade. But the good thing is the wind is supposed to start kicking up around 10 o'clock. It's supposed to be out of the north 10 to 20 miles an hour so should have good wind cover to make a stock. Got to find one first here. There we go. There's a deer. Muley bedded up under a cedar. Looks like a pretty nice buck too. Two of them actually. Well there we go. Got up to this high point here late morning. I've just been picking apart this country and looking under these cedar trees. I finally scooted out from the tree a little bit. Got out of the shade to check a few more trees that I couldn't see in the distance and sure enough there are two, at least two, muley bucks. So they're in a pretty good spot. And I think I could hop down in one of these drainages and close the distance pretty quick. Yeah, the wind is out of the north right now, which is basically blowing from me towards a deer, but they're 1,400 yards away. I mean, they're not, they can't smell me from here. But looking on Onyx, it looks like I could come over the top that hill and that would be about 40 yards from the deer. So that would put me within bow range. If it was just the one buck, the one I originally saw, the one on the right, I think I'd be able to sneak right up to that tree and just get ultra close. But the buck on the left is a little bit farther out to where he could see back up the hill. I'm gonna figure out exactly what I wanna do. I know what drainage I need to go down now. The wind has kind of been shifting throughout the day and now it's out of the north northeast and that's what it's supposed to stay the rest of the afternoon all right got my route planned out here so i'm going to slide down the hill get a little bit lower in the train get below their eyesight and then hit that drainage and then i'll come in around the back side so it's i mean it's all pretty cut and dry how to get there you know it's just wide open country with a few spotted trees here and there so there's no mistaking exactly where those bucks are at as long as they stay put all right here we go my first stock on a mule deer Looks like I got a thunderstorm brewing behind me here. That can make things interesting. I can see a wall of rain already. Yep, there's definitely a cell coming. Make it stuck out in the wide open in the middle of a thunderstorm. We'll see, hopefully it won't last long. The storm has held off so far. The rain is more to the east. But that's the tree right there that they're bedded under. So I'm gonna loop around, come up the backside, and that'll put me within about 40 yards 
of the tree. side of the hill. Their bed is just over maybe a hundred yards from here. Had a little bit of a close call. There was a muley doe that was bedded right down here. She saw me coming around the back side of this hill. Stood up and looked at me. Acted like she was going to run up this way towards where the bucks were bedded. So I quit just jetted in front of her and tried to spook her the opposite direction. Thankfully that's what she did. Because if she would have went towards those bucks, I think it would have been all over. This is it. Going to get geared up here make the final approach over the hill. At this point, I'm 23 yards away from these bucks. They're completely relaxed, looking the other way. But the problem is, they're bedded directly in line with each other. I'm considering coming to full draw and whistling to try to get the bucks to stand up. But my fear is, when they do stand up, they're still gonna be directly in line with each other and I won't have a shot. But I decided to wait it out and let them stand up on their own in hopes that just one of the bucks will stand up or if they both stand up, they'll separate and give me a clear shot.
well. Dang it, man. That is a heartbreaker right there. Got to within 23 yards. I mean, they were both looking away. One actually laid his head down and slept for a while. And I thought it was just a matter of time before they stood up and I was ready for him. And then the closer buck, the wider one, made a quick movement with his head or something and it got the other buck to snap his head around. And when he did, he looked back towards me and then started to get up. So I came to full draw and they weren't gonna stand for it. I guess maybe it was a situation where I got in a little bit too close to where you know, once they saw me, they weren't gonna you know, stand there for a second or then you know, maybe bound out to 50 yards or something like that. Once they you know, saw me, they were just gone. Oh, that was fun. There was a couple of dandy bucks right there. One with a wide rack, one with a tall rack. Either one I would have loved to have shot, but I think it was also getting, it was also a little bit of a tough situation in that there was two of them bedded right there together. So even if they did stand up, I was afraid that they were just gonna be right in line with each other. And I figured there was no way I was gonna get a shot that way because I you know, would risk hitting the second one when the arrow passed through the first one. Then I debated going down the hill a little bit lower and trying to get at an angle where, you know, there was a little more separation between the two. But th at that point, you know, I'm so close and they you know, could stand up at any moment that I just didn't want to risk moving and having things fall apart that way. You know, if anything, maybe I got in a little bit too close to where, you know, if I just stayed back, I left the camera right here at about 30 yards and then I crept forward a little bit closer to where, to where I could see them better and would have a clear shot if they stood up. But it might've been one of those deals where, you know, when they saw me at that close a range, there was no way that they were gonna, you know, stand there even for a second or two, or even stop out at 50, 60 yards. You know, I'd been ranging spots beyond the tree in the event that they did get up and bound. And that way I would know the distance, had predetermined distances, you know, that I could reference if they stopped out there. But they did not stop, unfortunately. That was a heartbreaker, that's a tough one. So camera's at 30 yards. I made it right here to 23 to where I could just see kind of the tops of their heads, tops of their racks, so I could see which way they were looking. But here's where they're bedded. You can see where they paw out vegetation, get it down to bare dirt. And a tall rack buck bedded right there, and I thought the thing that was really gonna help me, because he was looking around more, the wider rack buck bedded right here. Yeah, I mean, he was he was looking the way the entire time, and some of the time he had his head down and was sleeping. But one thing I thought was really gonna help me was that, like I said, that taller rack buck was looking around more, but there's this branch hanging down, blowing in the wind, and I felt like that, you know, was obstructing his view from being able to see me. You can see how they move around the tree throughout the course of the day. When I spotted them, I was up on that ridge right there, up under that cedar tree. That's where I spotted them from. Came all the way around, came up the backside, and that taller rack buck was right on the edge of the shade when I left for the stalk. So during the course of that time, he got up and moved and rebedded right here. But I think that taller rack buck ended up being my demise because there was a couple times where he really whipped his head around like he. And one time I was in the process of moving, he acted like he'd heard me and then gave up on it. The other buck was aloof the whole time, didn't have a clue, like I said, sleeping part of the time. And I think if that, that taller rack buck hadn't been here, I think the other one would have eventually stood up on his own and given me a shot. He just never had a clue I was there. All right, well, I just made it back to the truck and I swapped my bow for my shotgun. It took me about an hour to get out after stalking those muleys, made the three mile trek back and just a couple hundred yards from where I'm parked here, I flushed a bunch of sharp tailed grouse. They were flying into a strong headwind. They went down in a little draw that looks like it has some cover in it. I think I can come in on the top and hopefully flush them back into that headwind and I should get an easy shot. I'm gonna load up the shotgun and see what I can do here. There we go. Looks like I got two. There we go. 
my first sharp tail grouse and my second sharp tail grouse. That's pretty dang cool right there. <laughs> Makes me feel a little better after those muleys getting away. Well, you can get daily limit is three. Two's good enough for me. So I'm gonna head back to the truck. Try to go glass some deer tonight. That's awesome. How about that? Is he able to get back on him? After an awesome first trip to this new area, I headed back home with a couple sharp tail grouse under my belt and a newfound appreciation and love for spot and stock mule deer hunting in open country. But from there, Mindy and I headed to the Grand Tetons for a few days to celebrate our 19th wedding anniversary. It's an incredible place and we had a great time hiking, exploring, and photographing wildlife together. But once I got back home, I headed back out to the prairie for a couple of more days for another go round with these mule deer. And once again, found a couple of good bucks in a really good spot to slip in close. I got to about 35 yards and unfortunately the wind swirled, the bucks picked up on my presence and left the area just before I crusted up over the top and would have been able to see him. A few days later, Zach was done with his elk hunt and he was more than willing to join me for a few days of chasing mule deer out on the prairie. And let's just say, the spot and stock action will pick right back up in the next episode.